What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel and I'm sorry for those who you know been subscribed to my channel. I haven't posted any videos lately. That's because I've been going now to college and also having a full-time job and on top of that I'm a husband and a father. So giving that into consideration has been a very difficult time for me to make videos every single day like or almost at least three or four times a week, right? But however, um, now that I'm gonna I kind of settle. I'm going to be able to make a video every Sunday. So, um, with no further ado, let's get to the video. What's going on, guys? And again, welcome to my channel. So, for those who do not know who I am, I'm Mando, and I mainly talk about natural gas and natural gas ETF, how to trade those stocks, or what I look for when it comes to trading those stocks. Um, I know I've been, I have not been lately in uh, making a lot of videos as frequently as before, but I'm gonna start making videos again, like I, I said at the beginning, almost every Sunday, because obviously certain recent reasons. I've been having issues with time. Uh, I've been having time constraints basically because of college and because of uh, my regular full-time job. So with no further ado, let's look at some of the stuff that, I, that I'm playing. First of all, natural gas. So natural gas, we did had about a 1.5% um, gap up. So that was basically on... Ba uh, uh, consisted due to the weather models change over the weekend we gain about four TDDs so that's total day degrees so uh, based on the weather models we are seeing some uh, more bullish weather coming in it's a confirmation of what's going on however at this time just like last year I prefer to buy puts at rally so if it rallies you know for instance you know the bottom was 1.812 right uh, and it went up like today obviously I'm not trading the futures right 1.87 you know that's like a 3% pop I would like to short at that 3% 3 to 4% I would love to short it uh, just because it's a so those type of moves usually pull back a little bit harder than usual right if you guys look at the four hour chart this is my my setup yes i do have buy volume sell volume right now in the four hour chart is basically more sell than buy so there's a lot more sellers coming in than buyers if you guys look at this as soon as we cross this ema ema uh 55 which is the blue line you know we tried to go above it several times but you know that fell and it kept going down down and down and down and right now we're about 1.81. Historically, the lowest it's been, like in the last, I gotta say, in the last 10 years, is 1.61. Do I think we might reach that scenario? I do think so. Uh, currently, we are at that at those levels where it might come back down to 1.61 then we saw it recover all the way to 4.929 so this is the natural gas pricing so i do think the bottom might be at 1.61 or 1.60 to be a little bit more specific that area might be a good area to go along if we look at it uh this was march 7 and this kind of goes in line with my uh, the fundamentals that I've been researching is that when it comes March, April, you are you are already buying into the uh, July, June months. So why are those months important, and why sometimes it's good to get in a little bit earlier into uh, the summer months? That's because that's when it creates demand for power burn. I don't know if you guys been watching the news lately, but we had a pretty mild uh, winter uh, in a, in some places around the world, like to include Australia, uh, it's been extremely, extremely hot. You know, you guys see it all over the news, what's going on over there. And heat actually also contributes, has a, is a major contributor in the United States for the demand or also known as power burn. 
power burner is usually made for making electricity for the houses. So if California is too hot, if Texas is too hot, if Chicago is too hot, you know, it's going to create a lot more demand for electricity, which right now the coal to gas switch is a lot higher than it has been in several uh, past years where companies are using more natural gas in order to produce electricity. So that's also something to take into consideration now coming into those months. So if you guys watch my videos, uh, you know, in the last few months, I want to say months because since December, November, I kept saying once we were like at 2.9, 2.7, I always said, if you guys look at those months, um, Something that comes up to mind is that production is in the all-time highs. Producers are, are not cutting down. You know, as a matter of fact, they are producing more and more and increasing production limits, which brings the supply up. And with the demand down and supply basically in all-time highs, you know, the price is going to go lower, uh, which is good for you and me if you live in, you know, one of the northern states because we got to pay for natural gas, right? But if you are investing in the long run as a, as, as a long, um, not as a short, this might not be good for you, right? So that being said, I've been, I've been talking about how this year might be the year that we actually reach, you know, 1.5. And this one, this one was when the bottom was 2.02. It went all the way to 2.7. Then it went all the way up to 2.9. And then we're back down to about 1.85. So something that I like to use as a, one of my technical indicators is this EMA. EMA 9 and EMA 55. So looking at this, this is the weekly, right? Notice how it's been riding the weekly very nicely and, it, you know, bouncing back down. It, it kind of went up. It went above the EMA 9. So once that happens, you just got to look into what the movements are. And it shot up all the way to 2.71. It rejected from EMA 55, came back down, and it, it tried to go and actually make a higher high. If you guys look at this, we have in a change of direction, you know. Those are your telltale signs. So, okay, when to get in, when to get out, right? That was the channel. And as soon as he broke this channel, we continue the downtrend. Right here, this one, wrong circle. We continue the downtrend. So this was a very critical spot. You know, we broke. It was a pre, uh, prior uh, support as well on the weekly chart. Right, this was a prior support right over here, and we see a bounce once it broke below. However, it bounced back up, bounce prior support, ascending support, and this was like the key area where, like, okay, we're above EMA 55, we couldn't really get that bullish weather to keep pumping to the levels that we were at in 2018, and it dropped all the way down to 1.85. And I still think we're not done. Uh, with natural gas price falling just because again we're in the widow maker months so until March April hits that's when I'm gonna start looking about going long in natural gas for the summer months so and I'm I'm thinking according to this old weather fiasco right this is just hypothetically uh, thinking it's not like you know I got a written stone somewhere is that Due to the climate change and what's going on, we might have uh, warmer than normal weather for the months of summer. So June, July, August. So we might have warmer than normal, which is going to create that pump. If you guys know, this pump, uh, where was it? Uh, this is 9.16. That's because we were having hotter than normal weather. We see it kind of uh switching right around august right so why is this important because usually september what is this uh august september october those months are fall months so when you have warmer than normal it's not the usual type of weather uh what it's causing is like okay we're gonna have warmer than normal for those days so 
suppliers or consumers are not expecting this type of weather so it's a surprise so when it comes warmer than normal during the not so normal or the average months well the price is gonna pop and sure enough right after after july when it dropped to about 2.02 it went all the way to 2.71 that was a 70 cents run you know that, that was that was a crazy run just when I really thought we might have a higher year, but however, that didn't happen. Um, what was it? It was like a 42% run. That was crazy. And of course, right after that, because of the weather models, no cold weather, right? All the way down to about October. That's when we start switching into the next. And we did another 34%, about 37% run from October over to November. And since then, just been coming coming down. Look at that EMA nine, EMA nine on the weekly charts is actually a pretty good charts to go by if you like some technical analysis, but also taking consideration fundamentals. So that being said, what's my takeaway from my trading is that I will be going short in any rallies, at least for this month. So the whole month of February, any rallies that I see, I'm gonna go short. Um and that's basically a three to four percent rally uh, look at it and for those who are following me on twitter or stock twitter they're like well you were long yesterday now you're sure you change your mind obviously most of the stuff that i do is fundamentally driven so if weather models turn bearish i'm of course going to turn bearish not because yesterday i said hey i'm bullish now then i'm bearish well i'm basically like a weather model weather model can flip flop from negative 10 Heating day degrees one day to plus 20 heating day degrees the next day. That uh, that type of change does happen, and you have to be able to adapt to those type of situations. Hedge your positions, do whatever you have to do, but don't always go by your gut. Always have some fundamentals, have some technical side. Talk to other traders to see what, what they think. So if you do not know any other traders that trade the market and you would like to, Make sure you look at the description down below. I do have the uh, um, the link for my Discord chat. It's free. You just click in there, and you're going to be able to join and talk to other people that also trade uh, natural gas as well as other equities, options, uh, any other commodities, gold, JNUG, JDST, all the popular ETFs basically that are out there. So if you do like the video, make sure you do subscribe. I'm going to be making a video at least every Sunday and I'm gonna be talking also about other equities or other futures features that I like to you know I like to play or like to when I mean play by the way I'm not mean literally mean like playing with them I mean like actually buying selling shorting going long buying puts buying costs so that's what I mean by actually playing is investing right or more like trading not investing so that being said, if you like the videos, make sure you subscribe. I am going to talk about uh, really quick about the S&P 500 minis and also the Dow Jones minis. So I actually made a video earlier. However, my camera had a little squirt, like a little squirt in your face going all over. So I forgot and I had to remake the video. So that was interesting. Uh, something that uh, the y, I think YM is actually cool. All right, so we are seeing a nice bounce, right? Because we are were, we were in oversold condition, so a bounce was expected. However, would I swung a long call for some of the um, equities that I that I seen? Uh, you know, kind of very very low. Would I swung any calls? Not really, just because this coronavirus thing going on is making the sentiment very iffy um, on on going long or short. So I prefer to buy it in the morning and sell it before market close, be all cash, especially during the weekend, because you don't know if right here, if this thing is going to bounce. So one thing that I'm looking at, I like to look at the four hour. It seems to follow the four hour much, much better. You see. Anytime that it goes past this four hour, let's not take this into consideration. This was sell the news and then it just came back up. But notice how when it touches or is near this EMA 55, 
it rejected and went back up. It rejected and went back up. It went down, but it rejected below, and I think this was a new situation, came back up and then actually crashed all the way down, all the way down to 28.405. Now, what happened? Uh, we see that this EMA, EMA 55, this is EMA 9, EMA 55 acted also as a uh, resistant, rejected when we went into that double bottom uh, area. I say area because it's not exactly a price, but it's more like an area. And when bounced back up, but we also went into a double top. Don't you love double top, triple tops, double bottom? Because depending on how you see it, you know, it's uh, it can mean short or go long. So it's not always the perfect example, but something to look at. You guys see this? This was a support, which not acted as a resistant. And besides being a resistant, also take into in consideration the news, taking in consideration the EMA 55. So you have about one, you got a double top. You also got a resistance, which is in this area right here. Prior, a uh, prior support, which is now resistance. You have a double top, and you also got the EMA 55 in the four hour acting as a resistance. So there's many areas of confluence that made me go short um, the day prior. So on Thursday, you know, most of the stocks were in fire sale because Fridays they expire. So by next day expiration or same day expiration. And that's how I like to play them. Now, what's the next step that I am seeing in at least the Dow Jones? On the Dow Jones, let me kind of clear this out. So there's a lot more buy volume in the last four hours. Sell volume is pretty low, 4,000. So it's about 84% to 15%. Where do I get this? I got on my TOS script in my discord chat so there's a channel where i put all the tos scripts and people put their own tos scripts where you can just go there and copy it and paste it into your own study yes it's free we don't charge you know i i think that's lame charging for a tos script so people do that but me i don't really care so key position to uh take a look at our area of confluence so we see this as a support which is now resistance um that's the main one i see i don't see anything else besides uh also an ascending resistance now let me change it to here to here oh there's my line see yes these lines they're supporting resistance based on a tos script that i also have also free on my discord chat so Make sure you go click join and you can look for free. So don't worry about it. So this area, this is an area of confluence that I see and that is very strong signal. Um, the best one that I would, the best one that I would want to get in for a short, and I say a short because of where, where we at, it'll be this area right here. Anything around this area. If I see a touch, I would love to, but I would follow this EMA uh, 55 very closely on the four hour chart and we will see where we land. This is for the Dow Jones Mini, S&P basically is the same type of um, scenario, right? Uh, let's look at the one hour. So the one hour we see that this EMA 9 that acted as a resistant couldn't hold we are looking at a uh we got the fibonacci as well so if i do have fibonacci which i don't think uh yeah i do have the fibonacci so this will be a good area of um shorting if the news still continues so for now i'm still short until things change right now we are looking at uh, resistance and right at this area should be a resistance area confluence in my opinion second step 
well, we, this this was for my previous drawing. I said uh, that's when I made my first video, and I said should reject from here. Um, however, the next step will be uh, around thirty to sixty. Well, I'm gonna say thirty to sixty. You know that should be your key point of it's gonna keep going higher or it's gonna continue with the downtrend. So just be careful. Look at that. Those are the type of indicators that I'm looking at. Coronavirus is still going on. There's more confirmed cases of uh that's happening now in other countries uh i believe the philippines and uh first confirmed case of human to human um, uh, um transmission of the disease in the united states so just be careful out there make sure all besides just trading make sure you guys are doing what you gotta do hygiene wise so wash your hands put sanitizer shower you know put a face mask whatever you can but make sure you guys stay safe out there uh you never know what can happen and i will see you guys hopefully sometime this week or next sunday i know it was a bit longer than usual but i had to make up for the lost time from the previous week so good luck and see ya